Hey there. This is Hooks and Ladders, where we talk about songwriting. I'm Blair Packham. I'm Alistair Bradley. And we have a guest. <laughs> His name Hi, is Ron everybody. Sexsmith. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Hey, hey people. All right. So we like to um, uh, we like to ask uh, specific questions uh, and that spark conversations, of course. So the, the question for Ron right now is, um, uh, can you... How do you keep a song from getting too clever? Like, do you ever find that when you're writing a song, you're putting something in for a sort of show rather than to get the emotion across? I think um, that has happened. Um, uh, as I, you know, as I sort of got better. I mean, I think when I hear my first few albums, there is a kind of an innocence there and certain songs that I probably maybe would be too clever to do now in a way because they were simple and and that's kind of makes me sad sometimes you but you can't go go back right go back. But, but but every now and then i i catch myself doing exactly what you're, you're saying and i have to uh i have to step away from it really and and almost you know recalibrate and think because i lyrics are i've always been the hardest part um and and so I, I found it works for me when, uh, and it's not my forte to be like, you know, you know how Elvis Costello was really good with the, the machine gun lyrics and- Wordplay. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, I, I can do wordplay and all that, but I mean, if, uh, that's always been the hard part. Um, so for me, if I get a really good first verse, I find a, a thing to do is I try to follow, I use that as a template for my second verse. You know the what the, the amount of syllable, syllables, uh, maybe certain kinds of language that I use in the first verse. Because um, I want to sing, sing as well, and and I want to have this continuity. Um, yeah. You, you know, I think sometimes where I do get maybe too clever is sometimes in the music. You know, because I'll I'll have a simple melody, but then there's this crazy bridge that happens, and I got to find my way back to the the song. And sometimes it's impossible to do that without changing key, you know, and then it becomes this whole thing. And um, I mean, but that's not a bad thing necessarily. But um, for me, I'm always the most happy when I've written a song that's really straight ahead, that seems like it's kind of always been there. You know, I, I never run away from cliches. I sort of run towards them because I figured they're cliches for a reason. They, they're, they're, you know things that people can relate to um so um so yeah it's always a struggle though that thing where you're you know because you can you you do it you know like like right. a, a melody i don't like song songs that are melodic in for sh in a showy way i i kind of like the mel melodies to again have this feeling like almost it's like it's familiar you know so like sometimes i go have i if I just rip somebody off or, you know, but what I realize is, is because I have so many influences, sometimes I have a song where the verse is like a Lightfoot kind of thing. And the chorus is like a, a Nielsen thing, you know, but it's just an extension of who I am. And, you know, and, and I, I'm always sort of, I kind of, in, I try to stay in touch with that. You know, the people that first moved me when I was a kid, you know, I'm, I'm Buddy Holly, these people, I, I always try in the back of my mind, I think, well, like, cause for example, when I wrote Secret Heart, I was thinking, well, I, I wanted to write a song that Buddy Holly could do. That was my whole approach because I'd heard all these songwriters at Fat Alberts and all these open stages, and they were really good at writing all these metaphors and these songs that had eight verses and like Dylan or something. And I realized, well, I'm not very good at that. So I'm gonna try to go back to the source in a way, which for me is Buddy Holly and write something like True Love Ways and that's, where Secret Heart came from. As soon as from, you say it, of course, it's like, it's obvious to me. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Buddy Holly. And I think that's why initially some of those old English songwriters were gra gravitated towards me because that's, they were first generation Buddy Holly fans. You know what I mean? Like they were the Beatles and those people, uh, Nick Lowe, you know, that's what they were into, Sam Cooke and all that kind of stuff. And um, so sometimes I, I, I do, get away from that and I have to find my way back to it um you know and also some records that were were just more 
lyrically ambitious than others as well. And I have to say, okay, well, that's just what was going on at, at the time. Um, but I think the songs for me that have been the most effective or the most uh, loved or whatever in my career are the, the really simple ones like Golden Hills or yeah. where it's just very plain spoken, um, very simple chords and all that. Um, I think generally people will, will uh, you know, they're, they're, they're willing to put up with something that's more, you know, I had a song called Breakfast Ethereal on one of my albums recently, and it was like this big uh, uh, show tune almost, you know, and, um, and people, you know, th who like me will get into it. But I think ultimately it's those waste in time and those type of songs that they, you know, that's the, those are the reasons they were into me in the first place. Right. So, you, so you've had an evolution over, you know, 16, 17 albums as a songwriter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've, you've learned and you've, you've, you know, uh, you've built your craft as a songwriter along the way. What would you say to songwriters that have a resistance to learning craft when, you know, they'll, they'll say in, in response to, well, you know, you, you, your craft could use a little more development, they'll say, but that will ruin me as a songwriter. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a tough one because there's a certain kind of thing that happens when you're young and really sure of yourself and you don't want to hear from some old guy talking about the, the craft. And, and I'm sure John Lennon was like that, you know, like John Lennon was like, well, I'm, I'm going to write this song. And, and thank God for that, because then you would get these songs like nowhere, man, or whatever that weren't these sort of tin pan alley things that they were doing. And I love the tin pan alley stuff too. So it is a delicate balance. Like I personally think, it's, it's valid, it's important to know the craft. I studied it, like even when I didn't realize I was studying it, I was listening to these, you know, Sinatra records, you know, when I was in my teens and Bing Crosby and, 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 and just sort of taking it all in. So I, I, um, so I think it's important, uh, you know, obviously if you're in the band U2, you're writing as a band, you're not writing these kind of songs and it, and, and that's, you don't really want you two to be writing Secret Heart or, you know what I mean? So so that's what I, I guess what I was saying to Blair earlier is that I, I'm really good at writing Ron Sexsmith songs, but but I would never, I don't think I would ever tell a young person, especially if they had something happening, like if they had a, some kind of vibe going on with what they're, even if it was rough or unstructured or whatever, you almost don't want to mess with it or sabotage that. Um, you would hope that they would just be interested anyway in the structure of how, the same way of, uh, you know, if you're learn, gonna learn how to make a table or something, you wanna know what did the, the pioneers do or something. Um, so yeah, it is a delicate thing because you wanna obviously nurture people that have a raw talent that are doing things that, uh, that are unique and completely their own. Um, you know, like, so, but yeah, you, you would hope that they would have some curiosity at least of, of this whole other world of, of, of having the craft. Because for me, the, the craft is a big part of it, but there's a, it's a, it, it only helps you finish it. You know, the inspiration that comes from someplace else, whatever you get this idea from, you, melody or whatever it is, that it's usually such a small little piece. And then you know, um, because you have this knowledge of craft or because I've whatever figured it out, then I, I know that if I'm patient and I'm not in a hurry, that this little idea I can see through until it's a fully fledged song. So I think yeah. it, you know. Super, super interesting what you said though about, um, you know, that when you have a first verse, you yeah. use that as a template yeah. because because that's that's always been my argument for structure is, yeah, like follow what you what the inspiration you know, like you you were inspired to write this thing. It comes out of you, and then you look at it. Yeah, and then you're like, okay, how did I do this? And then and then you can sort of go from there. And if you and and you can make it as structured or unstructured as you want. But if you're if you have that as a template, at least it's an example of how you could do it, how you could finish it. Yeah, I, and I I've seen uh, life that does that all the time. And if you look at his lyrics, you'll see that. Um, and, and I get, I've never asked him, but I get the feeling that he, that's what he does in a way, you know, he'll have this really great lyrical thing going, this internal rhyming scheme that's happening and it's, and, 
you know, otherwise, because you don't want to sing the first verse over and over, right? So, but you want yeah. the second, or if there is a third verse. Like, so also, the thing I do sometimes, if I can't finish a verse, I usually make that the bridge. Like, if, if, if I just have two lines of a, okay, well, that's all I can, you know, but you definitely want to follow through the, with a thought. Like, you don't want the first verse sing, going on, like, I haven't seen you in a month. And then the next verse is, I see you every day or whatever, you know what I mean? You want to have it some sort of, uh, like as a springboard to the second verse right right and a bridge should be actually what a bridge does in real life you know take you across somewhere and then you can come back to the song and all those things um but yeah i i, I do i do a lot of writing sometimes where people send me music and i have to write lyrics and and that, i find that helps doing this template thing for that too because uh, you know you can get it's not always hard to get a first verse going, but but the second verse you could really be pulling your hair out. But this is it's a it's a I just find it's you know it's not even a trick or anything. It's just a thing that um, it's that you know you have these tools, right? You know why does this verse sound so good? And then you look at it and you can sort of go from there. And and uh, I I don't know I've always done it that way, and I think a lot of my heroes have as well. I, I find it really helpful myself, so I know anybody watching will feel the same way. Oh, well, I, and hopefully um, Alistair can make sense of that last bit, because I was going off a bit, but I was losing my time. <laughs> so just try oh, to make it. I think anybody smart. can make sense of that, Rob. That, that, that yeah, yeah. No, it was all good. It was all good. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, Ron. 